few seconds to come on. Facebook world. Good evening, good evening. I'm going to get started in just a little bit. Thank you all so much for tuning in already. Um, if you don't mind, if you will go ahead and share it with someone else. Share it with some friends. Hi, Victoria. Hope you're doing good. Didn't get to check in on you today, but I do hope and pray that you're doing well. I'll give you a call or text a little bit later. Burning, how's it going, sir? Y'all don't mind sharing it? Share it real quick with your Facebook family, with your family. And I miss your fiance name up every single time. Aisha. Aisha, that's right. I need Kayla. Kayla, tell me, no, mommy, that's not her name. <laughs> she don't know. I see her. And I'm just sharing it while we're waiting. I'm sharing it on my other pages, so. All right. Hi, Isha, everybody. Thank you all so very much. Um, I think it's seven, so we're gonna go ahead and get started. So glad to have Mr. Nick Fryson here with me on tonight. Um, I want to also say um if at any time you all have any questions or anything please feel free to uh, put them in the comment section i am going back and forth i have my ipad so if you see me looking down that's what it is but we will answer your questions as much as we can as as many as we can before we go off but i am absolutely excited um to have mr nick fryson here with me on this evening as a male caregiver um you know we had ron on and we had a little technical difficulties with him but we're going to get him back on but in the meantime after our last live with dr marcella nick reached out to me um didn't even know at the time that he had been a caregiver but he reached out to me and i'm so glad that he did because he's on here tonight um, many of you know we started our series caregivers this is my story and so what we've been doing over the last few weeks we have allowed caregivers to come on and to just simply share their story because one thing for sure caregiving is not an easy task but as I always say it is doable um, it takes a level of sacrifice a level of love and what I wanted to do is to be able to highlight what I consider to be the heroes, those that offer care to their loved ones, their family members, um, their friends. I uh, wanted to be able to highlight those persons because sometimes, often, um, people don't really know the ins and the outs of what it takes. And so, as myself, being a caregiver, being um, not really new to it anymore, it's been a little while, but just wanted to be able to share some of the experiences so those who haven't been in that position will understand a little bit better what it takes and just to acknowledge and to um, give kudos and uh, appreciation even to those who are in it so tonight uh, without further ado um, I introduce Mr. Nick Fryson and Nick tell us just a little bit about yourself give us a little background well, first of all, I want to say thank um, everybody for tuning in. I thank for, if you're going to watch it later, I thank for Miss um, Priscilla for bringing me on as well. Uh, about myself, um, started caregiving when I was uh, 15 years old. My dad was diagnosed with glaucoma. Um, so uh, it really, really put a different um, level of, <laughs> I guess, manhood um, in the household because my dad never finished school. Okay. Um, however, he knew he stopped working to help the family with working. So only thing he knew was work. And so by him uh, having a wreck that um, because of the, 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 the impact of the collision, it speed up, it sped up. We had glaucoma and hereditary glaucoma. Okay. It speeded up the 
the time, about 10 years from the impacts of detachment and all of that. So yeah. he went from going to work to two jobs to no job. Can't even work, can't even work, can't even drive, can't do nothing without assistance from other people. So that was a big major transition. Um, grew up in the church. It birthed a lot of things um, out of me and a lot of responsibility and a lot of sacrifice, like she stated, that I had to make in order to um, become um, operating the speed of gratitude, grateful for the things that I had because finances went down from three checks to one check and my mother had that on the back. So when you are a teenager, you don't really understand the, 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 the burdens of leadership in the household. You are more so concerned about what do you want, whether it's clothing, whether it's uh, going places and all of that. So I had to learn really quickly how to deny self and think about the greater good of the family. Okay. So at 15 years old, you kind of, I'm not going to say thrust, but you took on the role of being a caregiver. Were you the only child in the house at the time? It was me and my younger sister. My younger sister, however, was uh, so young. She was, she fell under the her. So, so it was, it was my parents, um, both my parents and then um, my sister as well. So I had to really, really be an example for her, but also be present for my parents. Okay. All right. And so even as we talk about caregiving on tonight coming from the male perspective want to give just a few statistics before we move further um, looking at an article from just it was done in may of 2017 and um as it stands at that particular time and i'm sure there's much more now uh, according to this article it says that some 16 million adult men are caring for aging or ill parents and spouses uh, nearly two-thirds of them, which is 63%, are the primary caregiver for their parents or spouses, um, which equals up to 34%. And that was, again, in 2017. So it says more than half, which is 54%, said that it's hard to help their loved one with certain activities of daily living, like bathing, feed, and dress, and all that. So even in your case, I know you said initially it was your father. Then mm. at some point, it became your mother as well, right? Yes, yes. Okay, so were both of them down at the same time? Yes. Um, my dad, it was back in 2005. That's what it originally started. Um, and it was hard on both ends. One, because a man, like you stated, uh, uh, I don't know if you stated a part about a man that we don't talk Uh we just, yeah, we just, I don't know, I don't know, jump ahead or nothing, but my dad didn't know how to put words on how he was feeling. So he expressed his emotion negatively, um, um, because he, all he knew was work. Right. And so, but for me, I was used to just seeing my dad working, 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 providing for a family. So it started with him in 2005, 2013 is when my mom became ill and had two strokes and we had to go into disability retirement. Um, and both now he have somewhat in that time frame become, I would say independent, but came better with his condition. Okay. Um, not serving it from a spirit of depression, but saying, this is what I am. I'm trying to live my best life with the, with my limits. Um, but living it full. Um, and so when my mom became ill, they became very, very different, uh, because you know, the mothers are. You know, they to go to. Yeah. <laughs> they are. I had to learn a whole lot, a whole lot, like literally paying all the bills of the house, know how to move money around. I learned okay. really, really early. So, um, you like you said, it was like very, very detrimental in, in some aspect because that is at somewhat of a transition prime period of a young male um, that you're supposed to be hanging out with your friends and going places and I'm not saying it was a prison because I'm grateful that I had opportunity to serve mm -hmm. my parents in that capacity. However, um, it became a lot because you had to say no to a lot can't of invitations. Go, I just can't, go, yeah. can't. So at 15, you were what? 10th grade, 11th 10th grade. grade. Okay. Yes. So 10th grade where you have, you know, like you said, at that particular time for men or young boys, it's like, you know, right. you, 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 you dating, did. you yes. know, some of everything, uh, basketball games, football games. Did you play any sports? Yes. Um, during that time, I wasn't playing any sports, but I was into all the extracurricular activities, mentoring programs. I was in uh, Beta Club. I was in the, um, uh, what was that? Oh, God, I'm, I'm having a brain part right now. Um, I was JROTC. I was in... Um, 
uh, not, oh God, I can't think of the name of it. Futures Business, FBLA. Okay. Was, FBLA, okay. I'm sorry. Uh, FBLA, and so it was like, I'm at a demo with Upward Bound, I'm with uh, Crop, College Reach Out Program, so I'm, I'm in all these things. Okay. But it's the demand is so great that it's like, how can I go to school and perform high when my self esteem is low because I feel like I'm limit, limit, limited, yeah, limited right now. Okay, so well, but you were able to at least yes. participate. Okay, yes. so you had other people that would also help out with, or I yes. guess during that time with your father, your mom yes. was still able to do, yes. but she, you had to kind she of. She was the primary at the time, but um, I make sure that I would I didn't become a burden. Okay. So That's, you just yeah. kind of stepped up, yeah, and, yeah. and you know, did you have yeah. you have brothers? Yes, or, I got okay. four older brothers. Okay, actually, four older brothers. Uh, however, they wasn't in the house, right? And so they got updates through text messages, phone calls, yeah. and maybe Sunday Sundays after church or something in that regard. But it was really, really very different. Okay, different so time. were there any regrets with it? Um, no regrets, okay. no regrets. Even looking back at it now, because. Uh, I learned a lot about myself. Okay. Uh, in that time frame, I became very, like I said, I became very grateful for the small things. Okay. Um, with when you're caring for other people, one of the things that you find out is you don't take on extra things as much because you want to make sure that you're available for the need of those you're caring for. And so, being that you're negating that fact, you have a lot of time that you can either read, write. Uh, find out what are you planning to do with your life in the future um, and I was a writer I was okay. a thinker I love HGTV I like seeing something out of nothing Excellent. like I love all this type <laughs> of stuff so um, my dad is by far one of my one of if not the greatest male inspiration that I have because he possibly he couldn't work but he know how to work a, a speech. He okay. could pull a speech out of nowhere, and it'd be really, really good. So it, I have no regrets because it, it bonded the family in so many okay. different ways. Like it really, really did. It gelled us more than before because my dad was so busy working, he wasn't as present. Mm -hmm. Because it, when he grew up, his presence was financial. Right, and, and <laughs> that's how it was with a lot of them. Yes, and so, so then exactly. that forced him yes. to be home, be in the to be house. Home. Yep. Okay. Yes. And I mean, you are to definitely be commended yes. for being that age and, you know, yeah. not, because especially now, teenagers yeah, these teenage. days. No, <laughs> I don't know if teenagers these days. days is so crazy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because there's, there's a whole lot of selfishness that goes into <laughs> teens these days because a lot of them feel very entitled. And so to say, I have to take care, but, you know, not that they're not, because I must say that I have two girls mm -hmm. and, you know, they will bend over backwards to make sure that they can help me. I have 13 year old here in the house who right. does everything she can. So it's not all, but you're definitely as a young man to be commended for just stepping up and, and doing that for your parents. Um, even with that, um, and, and just dealing with the caregiving aspect of it, um, and I know you were young, and I'm sure there's some things you probably still do now at this particular point, mm -hmm. but even when we look at it from, a, from the standpoint of just being a male caregiver, period, um, you said, you mentioned it earlier, and that was one of the things that I asked you, even when I sent you a few questions, but let's talk about the fact that men a lot of times they don't they don't like to talk about even though the numbers are rising where more men now are caregivers and right. believe it or not just even for some of the studies that i've done it's not that they haven't been mm -hmm. in the past it's that they didn't talk about it right because men feel like you know we are the problem solvers right we are the ones who we handle see, things my keys, mr fix it y'all yeah, see that <laughs> yeah mr fix are, it mr fix it <laughs> And they use that, you know, in all aspects of life. And so, Absolutely. women, we are more open. Hence, Nurturing, you know, my favorite feeling, girls. And yes. so, we talk about it. We we will talk about it. We we will share um, what we want to share. Mm -hmm. Men, y'all tend to bottle it up. Yes. Keep it in. Absolutely. And so, what advice would you give to men who maybe, you know, even if it's not a young man at this particular time, I mean, I think it was very complimentary of you to do it and to see it from the standpoint that you did but let's just say you know because there are still some aspects that you still I had do. pockets I had pockets now I'm um, yeah. I don't want to seem as if I didn't have moments that and then this is a regret but I had moments that I was I'm always a human 
Yeah, um, oh, I'm so sure. <laughs> it was plenty of moments of making sacrifices because, uh, matter of fact, it was so severe when both of them were down. Um, and I get back to the talking point mm-hmm. about I'm working way way up into it, but um, when both of both of them were down, that my name was no longer my name. I became transporter. Okay. <laughs> because every day I'm have at least two appointments a day, and I probably have one day out the entire week that is no appointment. So. It became frustrating because now I can't even go to college and focus because my fear is that no one else is physically present. Um, I had some support from a church family, my past, my uh, previous pastor wife, and they was present. You know, I can kind of um, be vulnerable with her okay. at moments, and she kind of built me up and told me to be strong. But man, it was it was very different because like I couldn't even date anybody. That's that's the biggest thing. Um, that was, and I wouldn't say regretful, but it was a lot challenging because, you know, when you're dating someone, it's all about availability. It's all about, I can't get to know you if I don't have access to you. I don't have the opportunity to get to know you. So it was very limited because my pri- my priority was my family, my household. And if they didn't kind of, if they didn't kind of serve that, they start off one way. And if they, if I see a wedge kind of coming in between, I kind of pull back okay. only because I know my primary, um, Goal and gender will make sure that I'm taking care of my parents first. But when you t- when you uh, pose a question about communication, I think that's the biggest thing. Communication is because most men don't speak on information that they don't understand, mm-hmm. and so we 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 hold it until we can wrap around logic about it. And so if we don't understand it, we go with the flow until understanding come. We don't necessarily like questions when we don't understand what's going on okay. because if you ask me a question I don't understand I'm frustrated okay <laughs> so I couldn't understand not from the medical standpoint but I couldn't understand if I must be transparent why would God allow me to deal with the burdens of my parents at the time um caring caring for them at the time where I was just supposed to be hanging out and didn't have a kid in the world and all that. So I was so focused on just doing I had time to stop and think about it. Okay. And say, if I don't have time to think about it in the sense of I'm trying to say, hey, X, Y, Z, this is what this is how I feel about it. No. Men only put their mouth on what they understand. If they understand it, they're going to keep going. They're going to just keep staying focused on whatever it is in front of them, not necessarily around them. And so if I would have to say a word of advice for any man, young or old, uh, my fiance, I'm gonna give you a shout out, Aisha. Um, she taught me this, and it's very hard. It's got to be a constant reminder. I mean, it's not a, just an overnight experience because society teaches men to be closed clams and be this strong character guy, to be the Thor of them all, Captain America, present yourself in one way, you know, never show no weaknesses. But however, when you get into a relationship and you build your own family, it's not. It's not friendly, fair, or fun to deal with someone who's closed in. Right. And so I had to change my way of thinking because if I wanted to not only survive a relationship but be successful in it, my fiance taught me, she said, it takes courage to be vulnerable. Okay, got it. So now I'm not thinking about being vulnerable. I think about I'm being courageous to talk about my fears. I'm talking about... What's really going on in my head? Sometimes she got to be like do heart surgery. She got to go do brain surgery and pick my brain. And it's not fair to her that she have to do that. But because she's going against years of being taught society way and being years of being how my dad, um, how he was. He just did, did, did. He never really stopped and just said, hey, this is why I'm feeling like this. Yeah. And so I would tell you, man, like open up. Talk find okay. somebody who you can be vulnerable with who's not going to take advantage of you because once you open your mouth about it, it's just like, oh, so I'm still living. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I feel it. Okay. And it's okay. You know, yes. a lot of men sometimes don't like to show that emotion because mm-hmm. like you say, I mean, society is taught that men shouldn't cry. Men shouldn't, you know, if you show any type of emotion, then you, you find it's be, weak. Exactly. Right. You're, you're weak. And, and, and I had to learn that even myself. Um, mm-hmm. I think my pastor um, was the one who taught Pastor Mandrell, okay. Jerry Mandrell. That's, okay. that's my only pastor. <laughs> okay. I'm just talking about Judy yeah. or Mandrell. Yeah, he, sure. um, Pastor Gerald. Pastor Judy ain't going to cry much. But Pastor <laughs> Gerald, right he's, he's a man. <laughs> <laughs> but as a man, because, you know, I mean, even past pastor will be up and get emotional about the word right. and, and cry. Right. And I had to learn through him, like, you know what? He's okay. a man, man, and he he's, can cry, right, right. and it's okay, right? You know, but 
it, it is a societal thing, but right. you learn that it is okay mm -hmm. for men to be in touch with their emotions. Um, exactly. Just as well as women. And a lot of times they just, they don't talk about it because they don't want to be seen as weak. And like you said, when you don't know what to do with it, yes. you know, it's like, you don't want to talk about it. You kind of run away from it. You yes. clam up. You and suppress so, it. Exactly. Suppress and, and so what has happened even from my research, I'm not a man, so I can't say, but from my research, what what you realize is that men are, they're used to being the breadwinner. They're used yes. to being the working one, you yes. know, um, one guy in one of the uh, pages I was reading, he talked about how even with his mom, you know, he was a primary caregiver for his mom and he ended up having to do everything, the the bathing and the putting on clothes and not only was it awkward for him, it was awkward for her. And so, you know, it's like, how do you talk about that to another right. man? Like, man, I have to get my mom dressed. I have to, right. you know, do all of this, but they both had to become comfortable with it because he was the one that was doing it. Correct. And so, you know, it is okay. You it know, is. that that's one of the things that we and want to emphasize even on here tonight. It is okay for men. One, to be a caregiver. There's nothing wrong with that. Right. That's 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 your family. That's yes. that's your mom, that's your dad, your sister, um, whoever. It 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 is perfectly okay. Right. And to know and to understand that you're not out there by yourself. There's right. other men who do it. Right. And it's okay to say, you know what, like you said, I, I don't quite understand this. Like, right. you know, when I should be right. chilling with my homies, I got to Go home because I got sure everything's on routine. Yeah. Everything's on the schedule. Um, I, also, just to help echo that a little bit more from my perspective would be um, when you're caregiving for someone and find out a lot about yourself, it, it's a birthing stage of your next level who you're about to become because you're, you're, you, you literally are yielding time for not only someone else, but you have time to reflect on your day. You have time to reflect on old conversations or whatever it is. And when I, when I, I'm sound, I'm sound I'm old, but when I came along, uh, <laughs> <It sounds old. laughs> when I came along, we didn't, the, the presence of social media wasn't as prevalent as it is now. Well, me, um, it wasn't so, <laughs> so yeah, my space. It, I didn't have as many distractions to pull my attention that way. Yeah. Um, so when you're talking about being a man, um, uh, when what is so much socially accepted to today, it's a very fine line. It makes it even harder for a man to be a man because what is being socially accepted today wasn't socially accepted 10 years ago. At as far all. as when you're talking about tears, you know, when I seen tears, I seen Will Smith crying because his dad wasn't present in his life on Fresh Prince of Bel Air. I seen Jamie Foxx was mad at his mom because his mom wasn't present. I seen um, on Family Manners when the, the dad, Eddie Winslow, and the father, um, uh, Winslow, they was talking. There was man to man conversation. You seen it like that, but now. You cry now. You you real you 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 reflection of uh, house uh, real uh, ladies of yeah housewives of Atlanta. You dramafied. It's all these things, and so it put man to be like I was about to cry with you, but I don't want to be related. Uh, I don't want to be related to what this particular practice, what's going on at a particular moment in time. So. Um, out of the two, uh, like Pastor Mandrell, based upon Pastor Judy Mandrell, she <laughs> said, uh, through her observation, through her to her them two, I'm the same way with me and Aisha. Um, I cry in a minute because she done created that environment where I can be it's all safe. of me, and mm -hmm. it's safe. It's it's like okay, you got it. now. This this is my scroll. I'm really really firm about this. Um, but when she just she have a heart to be like, it's okay. You need to create this atmosphere, like, and you have to find those people in your life, not what society say, but you have to find people in your life that you create your own world. Like, you take a village to raise a child, and once you become a child, you still take that village to support you and brace you up. Once you find those people, um, it's okay, because if you don't, you're going to be a bomb that's ticking and ready to go off. Yeah. And it's okay to cry with yes. other men. I mean, yes. it doesn't mean that there's anything wrong with you. Right. It just means because what you don't want is for the pressure of it right. to build up. Because one thing you. about caregiving, um, and it's all different. I mean, my story is different from your story. Mm -hmm. And I say that all the time. We all have a different story. Mm -hmm. But the care 
and the level of care and the passion that comes with care should be the same, mm -hmm. you know? And so for me, um, for instance, you know, my mom is on this staying up all night. That's been our new thing. And so just this, a few days ago, she was up all night and, mm -hmm. um, I'm able now through technology to watch everything that goes on. And so I don't necessarily have to get up Physically and run, up. but to watch it, you know, mm -hmm. to watch what this disease is doing and see that, you know, you're, you're helpless, you're hopeless. There's nothing you can do besides pray mm -hmm. um, at that time. It can pull at everything in you. And it so for us, as women, sometimes we, we verbalize, mm -hmm. you know, and there are a lot of women too who sometimes don't deal. But for men sometimes to even verbalize, because not only are you caregiver, but you're caregiver to mom, you're caregiver to dad. Yes. And so that pulls yes. in a whole different way because no child wants to see their parents, no. you know, laid out sick from whatever it is, whether it's glaucoma, whether it's stroke. No child mm -hmm. wants to see that, Correct. deal with that. And then on top of that, I got to care for that. Correct. And so that's a whole lot mm -hmm. to be dealing yeah. with. And so you have like to, really... yeah. And, and you have to come to grips with the fact that, you know what? It really is okay. You know, um, you said that you were a writer. You know, mm -hmm. I found so much um, journaling is mm -hmm. like the best. The and best I friend, tell people, I'm telling you. Because... You can write your emotions, even if you don't do something with them, even yes. if you don't share them, you don't have anybody that you can share them with. And I love the fact that you said that your fiance is one that you can talk to, you can cry with, because you need somebody that you can be vulnerable with mm -hmm. and not have to worry about if I do cry as a man, mm -hmm. if I cry, if I boo-hoo, they're not going to look at me different Correct. because that's what happens a lot of times with men. It, you don't want to look that you don't want to be looked at as you want to be Superman all the time. All the time. <laughs> you you yeah. want to be Superman. You don't want to come down and be Clark Kent. Yep. You just you you want to be Superman. And so there are some things that become kryptonite mm -hmm. to us. And if you don't let it go and and deal with your emotions, mm -hmm. you, you're gonna you're gonna kill yourself because that's one of the things that happens and one of the things that studies show is that the stress mm -hmm. from not decompressing from not mm -hmm. de-stressing it is the stress that oftentimes take hold of men and you end up with high cholesterol hypertension mm -hmm. heart attacks stroke diabetes. because uh, diabetes yeah That's diabetes right. because you don't let it go and stress reality is stress will kill you it will as, as they say, stress will kill you dead. I don't know and, how kill and, you and dead go, but it will. And matter of fact, um, my mom, two scrubs came off birth from stress. Yeah. Actually, it was just after the test done, it was like, you just stress. Why, why are you stressed? But to the one part that stood out really, really uh, heavy with me is when you say you're taking care of the one that took care of you. Mm -hmm. um, it's one thing to work out of school, one thing to work out of daycare. People can't help themselves. You know, it's an extension of your passion. But when you talk about your parents, what you came from, who sacrificed so much for you, all this, and they can't help themselves. My mother couldn't have a conversation. She only can just look at me and hope her look is translated into words so I can understand her need at the time. It's like, it was very, very, very challenging. And you talk about um, with my dad, like, uh, he yielded so much time with all his boys. Like, and so he's my hero. Um, okay. Even to this day, um, my fiance can tell you how much I always say, well, you know, my dad said this and my dad said <laughs> that. My dad said this because he spent, like my dad was the type of person that, now I don't know, y'all gonna go get my dad. He beat me, <laughs> but he talked to me like, uh, he beat me for like 10 minutes if he can last that long because he get tired of that. But uh, <laughs> after that, he speak to me like two hours over the next couple of days, two hours each day to make sure I learned the principle. So he was so really adamant about teaching me how to be a man that the caregiving spirit that he had prior to him going down is like we just switch roles. Okay. And so for, for me to emulate that, you know, the enemy comes too in your mind. You know, when they talk about glaucoma, my big, my biggest fear was my dad won't see me graduate. 
he could be there. Won't it literally you see me yeah. walk past the stage? And you know, it was it was so much something that attacked your mind in that process, especially in isolation. You know, that's why you have to not only when you are um, caregiving somebody, you can't have too many idle too much idle time because you get frustrated, you get mad, you get upset. You you can get in so many different ways because you're like, well, you know, I could be doing this. Then you start getting mad at family members and who can do more, <laughs> <laughs> but they don't do more. They just check in. Everything all right? Uh, I guess. I mean, so, <laughs> yeah, right, right. Good morning to text. Come by. But um, it, you, you, you're very right with them. You say something like that. Though. Yeah. And and it, it's important, you know, um, again, one of the main reasons why we wanted the, to do this. And we hope and pray that if you are a male or you know a male that's out there, you know, that you share this because we want to bring this awareness. You got to talk about it. You, mm-hmm. you, you have to. Um, support groups are very, effective. very important. And effective. What we, now I want to back up a little bit um, because I think we both talked about a little bit, but even at that time, you said that even at 15, mm-hmm. your church and your faith, mm-hmm. how important at 15 years old, how important was your faith in helping you to carry out caregiving for your dad stepping up as the man how important was your faith my faith was very very important only because um without it i wouldn't be as focused to be able to make sure that i'm um servicing the need um of them so what my faith did is cause me to escape while even being present like i'm in another room but i'm having a relationship with god where i can have a conversation with him I said, God, I don't know why this is happening. So my it, 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 it served as a transition in conversation. At first, I said, I don't know why it's happening. But then it went from why it's happening to God. It, it didn't happen. Give me strength to push through all of this. Get, then went from strength to strategy to become a better person. Um, give me the patience. It taught me so much about waiting on God is not literally an idol, but is literally in working. I'm focusing on servicing the need of those around me to be able to deny myself to to handle the need in front of me. So I had a lot of faith in it. Faith is um, is literally the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So I was hoping for a greater expectation from God. You trying to preach on me? You see me? I don't <laughs> So you're you're 15 years old. Yes, I'm telling you at 15 um, because I was a uh, I was in the church so much. I had a church key. Like, at 15. At 15. That's yes, because my grandma was the mother of the church, and so we used to clean the church as well. <laughs> <laughs> we used to clean the church as well. So they used to call and say, "Hey, go open the church." Because sisters got going. They got choir practice at night. They got a board meeting tonight. Whatever. So while I'm walking and while I'm working at the church, I'm always talking to God because I felt like God had a presence on me. Uh, prior to that, mm-hmm. the caregiving thing, but I just yielded more time to say, God, you know what? What's going on? Let's let's have more conversation. This literally happened. Like so, my faith was very very important. That's why all my friends can tell you during that time I was like one of those people like beyond the years. Mm-hmm. They would say, you you hey granddaddy, uh, <laughs> hey rabbi, hey rabbi, have all these things to say because I literally had to like become who God wanted me to be to serve the need of those around me. Not just my parents. Those are my primary caregivers. Uh, I did primary caregiving for, but just in every aspect. And when I say change the direction and in a better way that to me now operating as a selfless person. And sometimes, you know, even in that, you know, your past can ruin you. Um, if you're not careful, it's not operating out of obedience of God. So it's like, I learned a lot very, very early age. I'm like, I'm so vulnerable. Uh, I'm saying that vulnerable. I'm naive to the truth. Like, no, I'm helping this person. I'm helping this person. So, out of helping someone, sometimes they can take advantage of you. But from from my parents, my faith was like really, really, really important for me because it's like my only escape. And God provided a joy and a peace that overcame me. That even though I seen it shifted my perspective. Like, okay. it ain't that bad. Yeah. You know. Let me try this one more day. And, and just it kept is one what, more day. what keeps you going. Yeah. I, I actually um, today. I had an interview um, with the Alzheimer's Association. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm working with them. To work with them? I'm actually working with them. I do. um, I partner with them, work with them, Mm -hmm. with the uh, Tallahassee Alzheimer's Walk Association, Mm -hmm. the the Alzheimer's Association Walk for a Cure. 
And so I'm actually working with them this year. The walk won't be until later in the year, but I'm working with them um, in their marketing. Mm -hmm. So I had an interview as I'm actually one of their brand um, ambassadors for mm -hmm. Alzheimer's Association. And so I did an interview today. And one of the questions that the lady asked me was about, you know, the importance of my faith, because I, I talk about that no matter what I do, um, right. even in this I'm a believer. Um, the mandate that God gave me, which is what I'm doing, is making ministry out of these moments. Right. And so with that, faith, your faith, um, your ability to be able to trust God in the process. One of the things that I've learned more than anything else is the grace of God. And God helping me to understand that there is no place that we will ever be. There's no place that he'll ever allow us to go in situations where he does not provide us the grace to endure them. And so she about to give me she got me sweating now, y'all. I'm telling you. Like <laughs> I'm finna I'm really trying to stay in the box. I'm saying it, but it's, it's like she saying some really good stuff. You hear me? That is that's what it's all about. I mean we he gives us the grace to do what we do. And so mm -hmm. even at fifteen not understanding mm -hmm. um the process, me, you know, I'm I'm at a you know, I'm forty four years old, so you know, life would say that I should be doing some other things. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I mean, a lot of times this is kind of where it falls. Mm -hmm. You know, you get your children up and got one in college, one about to go to high school. And it's like, okay, you know, you mm -hmm. almost get to that. Oh, my gosh, you know, I'm almost child free. Although right. you're never free of children. Right. But then now you're caring for your mom. You're caring for right. your grandmother. It's like it's a yeah. Over cycle. Exactly. It's like, wow. And so, Where's the break? you know. But it comes with, yes, it comes with a different type of um, stress sometimes. Mm -hmm. It's not all joyful at all. Right. But, you know, there are those times because like you, you know, the time and the value that comes in being able to spend that time, mm -hmm. the, the nuggets that I get, you know, I mean, my grandmother, 95 years old, church mother. So some things that come, it's like, wow, I wouldn't have gotten that right. any <laughs> right. other way. Some things that even with dementia, some things my mom says, it's like, you know what? That was good. Right. But just being able to spend that time mm -hmm. is is so priceless. Mm -hmm. But you lean in. And, and I tell anybody, same thing I told a lady today, it is your faith. Mm -hmm. your Your faith, your trust, your belief in God that helps you mm -hmm. and so you learn how to lean into that is what i say you lean into that grace you lean into your faith prayer mm -hmm. um the study of the word for me like i told her it doesn't matter to me in so many ways i, I know the god that i serve now everybody may not serve the same god i serve i'm just holding but my hands the one that she's, she's i really... serve i believe in wholeheartedly and so i believe that the word of god the Bible, the Holy Bible, I believe that there is power in the word. I believe there's strength, there's peace, all of that. And it becomes important when you're in situations like this mm -hmm. because, you know, it's when you lean into it that your strength comes. And you, you mm -hmm. wake up and every single day you're like, you know There's what? Lady here, I'm I can you make that. it through uh, I wish, this. Pastor Judy, I wish you watch this right now. But if we go back, <laughs> you know I was in class. Terrence, you know I was in class. I'm telling you, like, <laughs> this is hurting my head. Um... <laughs> But one thing that she said, I'm, I'm going to go back to the 15 um, part this, it, that wasn't so friendly. Um, going through this, the, one of the parts that um, I didn't mention before was I felt very different. Um, very, very different. And the world don't make it better because uh, you have Ooh. friends um, at 15 like, uh, you got to do that again? Uh, they so insensitive. like, uh, But they don't know. They don't know, yeah. So I can't really judge them because... Um, but. I was felt so different, and at that time, different felt dumb. Different felt dumb because, I'm like God, I, I just don't want to be deep. I don't want to be this person. Really? I don't want to no, be I'm caregiver. Saying. I don't want to be this type. Whatever. I just want to just kind of fit in with everybody else. But so my because I was handling so many responsibilities, we couldn't have a basic conversation. I'm gonna give a different perspective because I'm sitting around wisdom all day. <laughs> when I go home with someone with so when we talk about conversations, I had girls tell me um, that, hey, I'm going to marry you after I finish hanging out. You're going to be my husband because the knowledge that you have, the will that you have is so beyond me right now. <laughs> but I want to save for labor, sit on the shelf or whatever. So that was funny. 
Um, but I felt very different um, at 15. Another part that you stated that was really good is like when you lean into your strength. Oh my God. Ooh, lean into your faith, your strength comes. It's a part, it's a movie, um, Hercules. It wasn't one rock on it, one the other act on it. He was holding the pillars. And the entire movie, he was denying who he was. And he was denying who he was um, because he wanted to be more of a man. Than, he wanted to be more or more than a God. But because he was in a situation where he couldn't control, only thing he can get him out of what the condition that he was in is recognizing the God in him. And so his fa earthly father told him, he said, hey, son, remember who you are. And he, he looked up towards heaven. I should let <laughs> Pastor Judy know I said it. Looked up towards heaven. He said, Father, I need your help. Lord have mercy. That <laughs> glory came. <laughs> he was able to tear down the pillars on the walls only because he leaned in to the knowledge of having faith who God was. So when you say that, that is absolutely true um, about um, you can't just only um, have knowledge of God. You got to lean and trust it and have the belief in it. At 15, I may not know the magnitude of what the Lord is my shepherd. I should not want. But because I came up in a church that taught me that, I can't go to uh, the skating ring until I able to recite it. I could, <laughs> you know, so I was like, That's so the, like the Lord, yes, uh, old Baptist church, old Baptist church, old Baptist, uh, yes, right. Baptist church. That's so right. they, 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 they taught me um, different, different scriptures, like, um, not Lord of my shepherd, but the, uh, what the other one is the Lord's prayer and uh, not Lord's prayer, the model prayer um, that the Lord gave the disciples. And they said, you know, that covers everything. And so I believe that in my heart, God, no matter how much pain. And then granted, now this another part of the story that was very different. I was ill from 14 to 15 myself. Oh, wow. And so when I'm talking about severity, I'm talking about really, really ill. Uh, three, four appointments. It took several months for me to diagnose with me. I had a fever of 104. It was so much going. So by one me coming out to a place that I'm back healthy, now it tables turn. Yeah. Like so it was like, oh my God, you talking about knowing who God is and at an early age and like God, cause the pain was so severe that you can't even I couldn't even pick up a sheet of paper without hurting my whole body lock. But um far from a caregiving standpoint, like I love this because I would never say nothing about it, so to speak, because it's not like a normal conversation mm -hmm. um, given. So I'm glad that you took the mantle and actually not just made it in a church setting, so to speak, but being real and say, hey, hey let me use my platform and create an opportunity. So so males, not only women, it's easy yeah. for a woman to talk about, not being sexist, but a man give an opportunity to talk about something they've been through with their parents and caregiving or grandmother who it was like it's very very yeah, not refreshing coming. it's not a common <laughs> thing so it's like here like okay i'm la i'm laughing myself like god everything is keep coming like replaying yeah. days and times or whatever so i'm grateful for that and i i appreciate you know i mean your transparency being able to talk about it because mm -hmm. you know there are some who still don't they find it hard but when you're able to look back mm -hmm. and to be able to say you know what that was the time period it happened um, I made it through and your relationships with your parents are, you know, it's like, it's unexplainable. Like my parents is so funny. Uh, <laughs> they'll just show up wherever I'm at. They'll say like the day they just showed up at my job. <laughs> hey, I'm here. Need help with this. Um, and it's because you have a history of just making sure that you're not taking advantage of them. Mm -hmm. You know, when, when both are down on their back and I got all funds coming through my hand but I'm also showing receipts of everything that's been taken care of. I'm sacrificing so much stuff. I'm doing all this that my sister would. Um, because another part of the story, I'm not, I'm not, because we only got an hour. But another part of the story is my mom, not my mom, my sister being young at the time. When my mom became ill and both of them down, mm -hmm. my sister didn't understand it so much. So she started acting out. Okay. Like literally now, what's behavior. What's the difference in age group? Um, I mean, age difference. My sister is 19. Okay. Um, now? So, she's 19 now. Oh, so wow. So she was okay. in middle school while I was um, in college age. So um, she was acting out. But something like, oh my God, I never was able to deal with, I'm trying to deal with the health of them. And my dad is on one side of the town at his in the hospital. My mom on the other side did a rehab. And so I'm cooking um, dinner every day, helping my sister with her homework, only to find out at school she's doing the complete opposite showing out. So you talking about, <laughs> I just burst out of tears. The lady called me, I said, I can't take it. I, oh, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not made for this. And like, that's yeah. what happens. Yes, I came overwhelmed. You don't know how to deal yes. with it. You yes. know? And, and you don't have that outlet. Yes. 
you know, yes. because I, I can't even imagine. <laughs> but and I'm sure with her, the acting out came because yes. she didn't understand exactly what was going she on. She stated it. Yeah, but you counseling came afterwards and all. But what what? And I'm, I'm glad you said yeah. that because the other thing, it is okay to go to counseling. Yes, it's okay. You know, if you don't have a support group, but you got a counselor, it's okay. There's nothing wrong. You could be saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, Baptist, Methodist, whatever right. you are. It's okay to go talk to a counselor. See, most people and most men, um, we think we know it all. Got it. That's true. Um, <laughs> but we will respect. We respect constructive information or instructions. We will respect that. We will sit there. We will take it. That's why in church, if you go to church on Sunday, whatever church you at, watch a man respond when the word is given. Watch a woman. A man is going to respond to instructions before he responds to a, can I get an amen? It's because they love information. This information is going to download me. It can change my situation. Information changed my situation so I can use this tangible thing that I can use. However, um, one of the things with counseling, like she stated, is people think that they're diagnosed when you go to counseling. Like, I got to go because I got problems. No, no, no. I'm trying to prevent this bomb from ticking, yeah. from, from, from blowing up. Let me set myself back. I can't trust everybody else. So I'm going to talk to this particular person who's certified, who can just really relax me. And they come and build that confidentiality, that relationship. And you do it everything. You do it, you do it anyway. They just probably do it a messy way. Like on the phone, talking with other people. And, you know, it, it's multiple ways that you can do it. But make sure you seek it. Um, because if you don't, like you said, you can't uh, lemonade. A good glass, cold, good cold glass of lemonade is not made with sugar alone. So you're going to have lemons at times. You're going to have some sour moments in life where if you do not talk about how I can combine all this thing together. When we talk about the church setting, we talk about everything is made. Everything that I go through is for the greater good of those who love the Lord and will call upon his purpose. You won't be able to understand that if I'm just over by, by myself. You think God just gave me lemons. <laughs> Not realizing the sugar is the breath that's in your body. They say, you know what? Let me change my perspective and realize that I might not be going this for myself, but I might be going through it to get information so I can express it to someone else. If she never would have did this, I'd be still like holding this information. I'm sitting at home. And of course, me and my fiance and family talk about it uh, from time to time, but it's really, really good that we can share this, like yeah. share this word. And, and talk about it. You know, um, I don't know, did not do this research. I probably should have, but I'll put it out there later. Um, I don't know if we have any male support groups here, but I will research that. I promise you I'll research that and i find out if we do because we want to provide that information. My whole entire goal, even with this Facebook Live, is to provide information, education, and to make you all aware of not just my situation. Um, of course, definitely we talk about my, my girls and, and what's going on. But even with this series, be able to provide that information because, men, there are support groups out there for you. And I, I would even dare to say this because one of the reasons and, and how this even came about is even with myself not having no uh, support to. groups here, right. there, were, there were only two here in Tallahassee. Mm -hmm. And one of them is at 6 o'clock on um, one day that I wasn't available. And then the rest, I mean, they have more than one, I'm sorry, but they're offered 10 o'clock in the morning, 11 mm -hmm. o'clock. So right. it's like, you know, most people All in the room, your have routine. to work. Right. Exactly. Right. <laughs> and so my thing was, okay, they don't have one. And so my initial thought was to start a support group because mm -hmm. I'm like, hey, this is my need. This is what I desire. They don't have one. And so what I also, you know, my thing was, they don't have what I need, then I create it. Right. That that that's you what you need. do. You know, you create it out of what you need. And so that's how this came about. So if there's not one here in Tallahassee, we'll make sure that we create one because I think that men need that outlet. And sometimes men are just not comfortable, depending on who they are. Mm -hmm. They're not comfortable talking to other women. They want a, a bra, another guy mm -hmm. to you know be able to and it's okay for men to have support groups that's and you know I, if i don't say anything else that you hear it is okay for men to have support that may not necessarily look like them they may not be you know they might not all be african-american they may not all be caucasian but they're support and it's okay to go it's okay 
just like AA means what it, you all need that support, that person that you can relate to, those people that you can relate to who are where you are, where you've been, that can help to say, you know what, um, like I say on this, we're all in this together. That is my belief. That is my, I, I believe that it's all of us. I say it every time. My strength, I may not be strong every single day. Right. But the little strength I have coupled with the strength that you have will make us both strong together. Mm -hmm. And we can still get through it together. That's what this support is all about. And it's the same for men. You know, I mean, you ain't going to be on the up and up all the time. Right. Financially, statistics show sometimes being a caregiver, the burden of it financially is a lot. And when you're having to, because men are natural providers, right. the hunters, right. they bring home the bacon. Right. What they say, they bring home the bacon and mama cook it. Yes. Now it's a little bit different depending on who, you the know, situation. what's going on. But at the same time, that's, that's the nature of a man. And so they go out, they hunt, they do. And so... They don't want to, you know, always... Stop and just relax and just talk. Yeah. And so, we know that. You you may not want to be seen in that light, but get some help, please, by, by all means. Connect with some other people that you can sit around and, and talk about it. Whether y'all shooting basketball, cutting hair, doing whatever, but, you know, man, because it's financially, if... Let's just say your household works on two incomes and one income is down because of Health. whatever. <laughs> that's pressure. That is. That's pressure. They got needs. They got You know, because to they're still trying to figure out how do I make this work? And if you got children, how, how do I make this work? You're right. And if it's your spouse, this is the person that you love. This is the person you're covenant with. Um, I'll talk about that in the end because I have another show that we're going to do real soon after this. Saw some things this week that I'm like, oh, but I talk about that at the end. But nonetheless, that is the whole of it. Um, and we're not gonna be on here a whole lot longer. But Nick, um, just a few other things. Even in that, um, from that point to now, and you talked about it a little bit. What did that caregiving? If there was one thing that it taught you. Just, just one thing only that you can pinpoint and say, you know what, this is what I learned and this is what I can take with me and share from for years to come. What would that one thing be? I would say... I wish it was two, but... Uh, <laughs> I would say patience. Okay. Um, it's taught me patience because um, Dr. Torres said you never can go into a relationship uh, with the expectation of like uh, like going buying a suit, you have to buy the suit and get it tailored. Simple. And so in life, sometimes we look for tailored things that sometimes don't come that way. We have to wait and tailor it to our liking, tailor it to our needs and our wants to make sure that it's comfortable for us, comfortable for the people that we're serving. And making sure that we're serving justice to those in our lives and not necessarily injustice based because we are not being impatient. Because growth, you're not the only one growing. They're not the only one growing. No one has a book on, no matter how much study we do and how much research we do, no one has a book on how to deal with me on this particular day. Because it's a day that we've never seen before. And so when you talk about patience, it's literally taught me from my relationship, my faith with God. Um, it allowed me to remove my emotions in a lot of ways. To make sure that I'm not making decisions out of emotion and cloud my judgment on choice of words that I'm using with any situation um, because it can be frustrating at times. No matter, now emotion is going to come because you're human. But patience says, you know, we'll just wait before we respond. A wise man once said nothing. And so um, patience is the main thing that has taught me to make sure that I think before I speak, think before I do. Um, and so my reaction every time is that it caused me, on the patience, it caused me to listen before I speak. But prior to that, I'm going to get to you like I got it. But um, it taught me patience. Okay. And and that's one thing I can honestly say. Caregiving, especially um, when you're dealing with those in a demented state, you have to have patience. Like, a lot of patience. Like, mm -hmm. you learn the patience of Job. You learn the patience of Jesus. You learn all of them um, with that. 
And so definitely, um, I want to, I, I pulled a few things offline that I do want to share before we get off. And these are just some tips for male caregivers. Um, they can be used for female, but these are some tips to make sure that you don't burn out. Okay. And some of them we've talked about, but one, join a support group that meets online or in person regularly to help you to not burn out. Okay. Um, it says there are many kinds of support groups out there. Some just for men, some that are disease specific, some that are affiliated with local churches and so many more. So find out what they are. You can Google them and go. Second thing, take care of you. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm glad that you had the opportunity, even at a young age, to still be involved in a lot of activities. Mm -hmm. This is something that I'm learning even more um, as I go along in my role. But you got to take care of you because if you don't take care of you, you're not going to be any good to take care of those that you're caring for. So take care of you. Number three, ask for help. Okay. A lot of times with men, that's another thing. Men don't like to ask for help. Because um, they want to do it. They want to make sure, you know, I got this. They, when you talk to a lot of the male mentality and a lot of things, is usually, no, I got this. I'm good. And a primary example of that is, it's very simple. For all the mothers or families out there, you done seen this happen before. It's just how, just how early this start when a man say, I got this. When you go to the grocery store. You come home with all the groceries in the car. <laughs> I guarantee you, your son is going to try to make one trip. With every last <laughs> one of them. I, it's I okay. It. I, we, the the groceries are already bought. <laughs> we got the receipt. You didn't steal it. None of that. But in their mind, they don't, it's not about the walking. It's like, I'm trying to show my strength right now. I can be. I'm, I got bags all up here on the other side. I can't open the door because I got so much stuff. So you're right. Like, yeah. I got this so it, mentality. It's, okay it's a killer. To ask for help. It's it, You don't always have it. That That's the reality of it. You don't always have it. It's okay to ask for help. Um, this says whether it's seeking additional help with care from other family members or going to a health care provider for your own medical needs. Because a lot of times what happens as caregivers, we tend to neglect our needs because mm -hmm. we don't want to. I got to do this. I got to do that. And so we'll neglect our own needs while we're taking care of them, but that's not good. And it says, put your hand up rather than maintaining stoicism. We don't like to say, you know what, I, I, I need help. Right. And a bad thing, and I've been guilty of this, is just simply assuming that people know that you need help. Right. They don't always know. Mm -mm. They may you may know your look situation. Good. And you may struggle look exactly. good. Exactly. <laughs> you may look good. They may know your situation, but they may not know. They don't know that you need help. And so it is okay, and this is for men and women, to say, I need help. And it's something that I'm learning uh, myself because sometimes when you're used to being the help, mm -hmm. sometimes it's hard to receive the yes. help. But I'm learning how to say, you know what? I'm learning how to put my hand up and say, I need help. Okay, so it's okay to do that. And then <coughs> take a break. Um, there are organizations out there where you can go and retreat, um, do whatever you need to do to get away. But take a break. Get away from it all. Step back. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Especially if you're caring for more than one person. Take, take a break. And then um, another one, educate yourself. So whatever it is your loved one is dealing with, educate yourself. Know it. Know what's going on with it. Learn as much as you can about whatever the disease is. Um, talk to the doctors, social workers. Or educate yourself. That's what I'm doing. And as I educate me, it is my goal and desire to educate everybody else. Okay? Um, and I like this one. Last one I'm going to leave off of. This conversation with this, it says, lead with and value your strengths. Just because a man is managing mom's finances instead of giving her a bath doesn't mean he's not caregiving. Okay, so men have always been nurtured, but not always, not always in the same ways as women. If you're looking for solutions, then use typical fixer predispositions to its full advantage and find solutions from professionals. 
okay? So even as a nurturer, do what you can, find what you need, get the help you need. And just because you're not doing something that somebody else isn't doing, doesn't mean that you're not doing it, all right? So I greatly, greatly appreciate the time. I appreciate those of you who are on tonight, who took the opportunity to view, share this with others. If you know of any other men that can use it, share it, okay? Um, anything, any um, advice, anything you um, want to give? One other tip that I'd like to add to that, as a man, um, because you don't, you don't, um, automatically share your emotions a lot it, just because you're not saying them you're wearing them yeah so be careful when you're dealing with the one you're carrying because they can feel that vibe they can feel that energy when you're not necessarily in the best place like you normal be you, you make them feel they're already in un, in in an uncomfortable place and you create that comfort for them by being consistent and taking care of them whatever you're doing whether it's transporting them whether it's uh bathing them whether it's paying the bills whatever it is Try to ensure that you filter out your emotions before you deal with them because you, the mind tells the body what to do. So you don't want to make them uncomfortable emotionally and they feel like they're a burden on you. And that can be like a reversible, an unreversible thing and they can die literally because they think that you, you're the last one that they was holding on to. You gave them life or you give them life because your consistency and your integrity and your respect and your quietness, your humbleness and all of that. You, you, you somewhat as a man, you don't have a day off in a sense of like letting your emotions down. And it's just, you have to always be present, show up and be present. Like, but filter that out and don't let that contaminate your connection with them because they need you as much as um, you need them. Okay. Yep. Absolutely. And I didn't, I didn't ask this. I do want to ask this question. Even with your parents, did you have to do any of that for your mom, like bathing or? Do any of that you had? I had to do a, a great deal of a lot of everything. <laughs> uh, my primary with my dad more so than my mom. Okay. My mom, uh, it was a little bit of everything. Uh, my mom, we had assistants, so I had to always be present. I had to learn they. I had to learn their medicine. Um, that was my biggest challenge uh, with both of them. I had to learn. I had to literally become a legal primary caregiver. Um, uh, what what the other word I'm looking Power for? Power attorney. Power attorney. Okay. Yes. So when I can sit in there and make medical decisions, so um, that's very important because in crunch time, like with my mother, if that thing, those things are not in place, they cannot take your word for it just yep. because you're the son. So make sure when you say educate yourself, make sure when you see things are kind of like uh, drifting off and not necessarily the best interest at a particular time, make sure from a legal aspect you have the right to make those calls. Um, medically, because it's it's very very important. You want to be there to sit by the wayside, and they just needed a yes, but legally they can't take your yes. Yeah, and that's uh, going to that be regard. another show. We are going to deal with that. I have another friend who's coming on for that yes, um, next month because that is very important. Power of attorney, and I'm learning that even the more as the days go by for me. It is very important that mm -hmm. you take care of that legally. Um, hopefully, before that time comes, because yes. if they're in a position where decisions have to be made. You have to have that HIPAA um, mm -hmm. declares that there are some things that you have to have. No matter how not, much you love them. Yeah. I, I had to make a phone call <laughs> yesterday and the lady asked me um, because I wasn't on there. So I'm telling the lady, listen, my mom has dementia. She's not going to be able to answer that. And so the lady apologized and she's like, well, can you just give her the phone, tell her what to say? In my mind, I'm thinking I could be telling anybody what to say, <laughs> right. but she accepted it. But it, right. it is very important. But we will have that at a later point. Again, thank you all so, so, so very much for tuning in. We do hope that some of what we said, all of what we said was informational for you. That, you know, you would take Nick's story. Um, I Again, I applaud you, Nick, just for stepping up and being the young man that you mm -hmm. needed to be as a young man. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I'm grateful for the fact that your faith led you. We both know that that could have been a whole different way, whole different but way. thank God because God plans things strategically and with purpose. Yes. And so thank you all so very much. Um, that is our time. I try my best not to go over an hour. We'll be back again next week. I'll let you know early next week who that our guests will be for next week, but uh, we'll have somebody else on. Um, do want to also let you all know uh, we did we do have our caregivers retreat that is coming up, but um, I pushed it back a month. So instead of it being March first and second, it is going to be April fifth and sixth in 
And so we did that simply because I want to ensure that this is the greatest retreat. It, it will be the greatest that we can make it for our caregivers. And there are some few other things that I just want to be a little bit better. So we're pushing it back a month. It is definitely going to be phenomenal. As we've said before, we have a section in there for our, our youth. Um, so because our, our children are caregivers too. You know, there are so many youth who, if they're not primary caregivers, they're in the crux of it with their parents. For instance, mine is 13. She's here with me. And so she's in this too. And so I wanted to deal with that area. So we'll have all that. We'll get all that information out. It'll be on Facebook. It'll be on my webpage. Um, and we'll get that out. But it's going to be April 5th and 6th. Okay. Um, we'll probably do about two more of these sessions. And then we're going to jump into some other stuff. Um, just... I said it a few moments ago. I've been sharing it on my page, on my My Favorite Girls page and my personal page. Um, earlier this week, there was um, an article that came out with uh, Dan Gasby and B. Smith. And it is something I'm going to discuss. Um, I can tell you all that now. We're going to discuss it on this live. Um, but his wife has Alzheimer's. And he has a girlfriend because mm. he said that, you know, he has to live his life. And so what I realized is that it's more prevalent, more common. Uh, it's a common thing now. And and, and I want to discuss it. So that's coming up in February. Be on the lookout for it. We're going to have a conversation about it. I may even try to do a panel, bring some people in because people have different thoughts. My thought is marriage is marriage. And it should be honored. That's why the vows say sickness, to health. Death. You know, yeah, good, <laughs> bad, sickness, and health. And so Alzheimer's is health. Whole different show. Not even going to deal with it now. Go on my Facebook page if you want to read a little bit more about it. Because it's going to be a good discussion. I promise you. All right. Thank you all so very much. Um, we pray that you were blessed on tonight. And we'll see you again next week. Thanks right. so much.